Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to chapter one. We're talking about how life is ordered. We're talking about how life is organized. Remember, we started with molecules. I put atoms together and I get molecules. I put molecules together and I get organelles. I put organelles together and I get a cell. I put cells together and I get tissues. I put tissues together and I get organs. An organ is a bunch of tissues working together to accomplish a goal. A tissue is a bunch of cells working together, doing the same job. An organ is a bunch of tissues working together to accomplish a goal. What's the goal of your stomach? Well, the goal of your stomach is to digest your food. Is your stomach alone in this job? No. Uh, my intestines help with digesting my food. My liver helps with digesting my food. My pancreas helps with digesting my food. Even my mouth and my esophagus, even my butt, helps with digesting. Well, it's done digesting, but we're not done yet. It helps with digesting your food. So a bunch of organs working together to accomplish a goal is called an organ system. So no organ works alone. No organ functions alone. They're all part of a greater system. And the goal of the system is just a bigger goal than the individual goals of each separate organ. I take a bunch of organs and I put them together and I get an organ system. I put all the systems together and I get an organism. I get one functional individual. I get you. You're a functional individual made of molecules, which make up organelles, which make cells, which are what tissues are made of. Organs are made of tissues. Organ systems are made of organs. You're made of organ systems. All the previous levels working together to make one functional individual. Here are a bunch of individuals. Here are a bunch of organisms. Here is an organism, an individual. Here is another individual organism. There's actually a whole bunch of organisms in this picture, but what is the one organism that we see in this picture? Well, that huge tree. But there's a bunch of organisms in this picture. There's a whole bunch of tufts of grass. There's a bunch of different trees. There's a bunch of bushes. What is this? Well, this is a close-up picture of a bacterium. A single cell. It's still an organism. This is one complete living thing. A single cell. This. Do you have any idea what that thing is? That thing is a slug. It's specifically a sea slug. It is a slug that lives in the ocean. If you would like to see some truly alien but beautiful animals, do a search for sea slugs. Their proper name are nudibranchs. N-U-D-I-B-R-A-N-C-H. Nudibranch is how you spell it. Nudibranch. Um, nudibranch, nudie, means nude, it means naked. Branch or branch means lung. So nudibranch means naked lung. It's naked lung are not naked lungs. It's naked lungs are naked gills. These are its gills right here. This is a slug. Do a Google search for nudibranchs. You'll see some truly alien, truly beautiful individuals. Plants, animals, bacteria, and what's this last one over here? Fungi. We'll talk about fungi in biology too, and I want you to know that I'm cheating by putting this picture up here. When you see this mushroom, you think, oh yeah, so, well, this is an organism because it's grow growing out of a tree, it's a plant, and a fungus is basically just a kind of another kind of plant, and that's not true. Fungi are not just another kind of plant. They're a totally different classification of organisms. If I were to go and pluck that tree, I'd kill it. It'd be dead. If I were to go and pluck this little sapling growing at the base of this mushroom, I'd, I'd kill it, pull it out of the ground. If I pull the mushroom out of the ground, I don't kill the fungus. The mushroom itself is not the organism. The mushroom itself is not the individual. It is just a reproductive structure of the individual. Um, what you would consider roots, if I were to pluck this out of the ground, you see some little white stringy roots hanging off of them, right? What you would call roots, that's the actual organism. So if you can imagine a big spider web twisted mass 
of roots and threads underground, that's the actual fungus. This is just a method by which it reproduces itself. It's like the difference between a, a, a rose and a rose bush. The rose, if I clip the rose off of the bush, have I killed the bush? No, the bush is going to live. It's going to be just fine. If I pluck the mushroom out of the ground, the bush, the living organism is still alive and still in the ground. So, I start at the molecular level, I put molecules together, and I get organelles. I put organelles together and I get cells. This is showing a nerve cell. I put cells together and I get a tissue. This is showing nervous tissue, a bunch of these cells all attached to each other. I put a bunch of tissues together and I get an organ, like the brain. I put a bunch of different organs together and I get an organ system, like the nervous system. I put all of the organ systems together, the nervous system, the digestive system, the circulatory system. I put all those systems together and I get an organism. I get an alligator. But we're not done. Biology doesn't stop at the individual. Biology keeps studying. I can go up another level. I can study a population. A population is a bunch of individuals of the same species living in the same area. I can study a whole population of individuals. I can take it even further than that. A bunch of individuals of the same species living in an area, I can study all of the species in an area. That's called a community. All of the living things in an area. So I'm not just studying the alligators. I can. I can study all of the alligators in a particular swamp. That's studying a population. If I branch out and say, well, I'm going to study the alligators, and I'm going to study the cypress trees, and I'm going to study the catfish, and I'm going to study the uh, bracket fungi, I'm going to study the algae. If I study all of the living things, that whole area that's called a community. If I study all of the living things plus their physical environment they live in, I study the swamp by studying the organisms and by measuring the rainfall, by measuring the temperature every day, by measuring the average uh, wind speed every day. If I take and measure, if I study a community plus the physical environment they live in, that's called an ecosystem. I can study all of the ecosystems together, and that's called the biosphere, the entire livable surface of the planet. I can study one organism, that is an individual. I can study a group of organisms in an area, that's called a population. I can study the community, all of the living things in the area, the alligators plus the weeds plus the heron plus the bushes. I can study an ecosystem, the weeds and the heron and the bushes and the alligator plus the rainfall, plus the temperature, plus the climate, plus all of that. Then, is a swamp the only ecosystem? No, there's forests, and there's grasslands, and there's coral reefs, and there's all kinds of ecosystems. And the planet has a lot of different ecosystems. And that, this is called the biosphere, the entire livable surface of the planet.